From Los Angeles, the home of film and television, this is Film Music Live, a webcast featuring outstanding composers, orchestrators, filmmakers, and more from the world of music for film, television, and video games, talking about their work and answering your questions. Film Music Live is sponsored by the Film Music Network and Film Music Institute. And now the host of Film Music Live, Daniel Schweiger. Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Schweiger, and welcome to Film Music Live, the show where you get to ask the questions to today's top composers. I'm happy to have you here. As the Marvel Universe reaches out beyond its top heroes to give fresh spin-off cinematic life to decades-old characters like Venom, the Spider-Verse's other monstrous denizen, Morbius the Living Vampire, now gets his big day in the comic book movie Sun. As embodied by Jared Leto, he's not so much a monster as he is a superhero with fangs, given that he tries to only snack on the bad guys. Morbius is in good, frequently suspenseful company with the longtime Swedish-born collaboration of director Daniel Espinosa and composer John Ekstrand. First meeting at the Stockholm Film School, Espinosa and Ekstrand found homeland notoriety on the Easy Money Crime series and such dramas as Leo and Outside Love before transitioning to Hollywood thrillers. Starting with Ramin Javadi to score the Denzel Washington South African set thriller Safe House before returning to Ekstrand to go to Russia and find the serial killer of Child 44, Daniel and John then went into orbit for life, one of the most grippingly memorable spawns of Alien. Going back down to a supernatural earth for Morbius, Espinosa brings his visually kinetic imagination to the powers of flight and fangs, one musically conjured by Ekstrand with sleek retroelectronics, sonar pulsing rhythm, and a somewhat sinister atmosphere that finally reveals its dark superhero score colors with a symphonically memorable main theme in full man-bat flap. Morbius is a thoroughly fun entry into the Marvel movie universe for a teaming that's mainly been about thrilling the audience, one that takes new scope here in creating the tug of war between a nice guy scientist battling his alter ego's bloodlust to fight a truly villainous foe in the battle of the killer basic instincts. And now let's welcome the composer and director, breathing new life into Marvel's living vampire, Jan Ekstrand and Daniel Espinosa. Hey guys, I it's mean, wonderful. We're switched now from the from the <laughs> the name side. So, so so I'm John and this is Daniel. So yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, you guys had a bit of a box office feast at the worldwide box office this weekend. Uh, Morbius has finally seen life. I mean, what does that feel like? Fantastic, amazing. No, I mean it, it, it's much more of a relief than than, than, than you would have thought it it would have been. You know, I have kind of been telling myself that that you know it's not affecting you know that not releasing the movie. But when it came out, it was so nice. You know, like I I really feel like uh, you know it's it, it's it's lovely to to have it out there. Yeah. Well, Dan Daniel, I think you were actually the first director we've had on the show. A very auspicious start for this. Um, so I guess. To throw it out there, uh, Daniel, what interested you in directing, and Jan, what made you want to be a composer before you guys even met? Oh wow! Should I start? I mean, I always been into music, and I always been a film nerd. So it's it's, and uh, I did, never was like a musician, but I was producing electronic music uh, uh, from like a really young age, uh, and then. But I never thought like I could do something with it. So I only had it as a hobby. But I, I knew for certain that I really want to work with films. So then I started, you know, I went to film school and uh, where we actually met. But uh, uh, so when I went there, when or when I applied for film school, it's like this kind of, yeah, it, it's a film school that takes care of all the fundamentals of filmmaking. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a foundation course. Yeah, a foundation course. So, so you could, kind of choose what whatever you wanted to do uh, <clears throat> and I first off I wanted to be a director and then I wanted to be a cinematographer but I when I got into school I saw that everybody else wanted to be that and and uh, and then I had our first like sound lesson and they start talking about sound design and I could see that the resemblance of of music and 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 especially uh, and and sound design was so uh, 
it was so close to each other. So, uh, so I went for uh, for going for to be a sound designer, and then uh, after that, I worked many years as a sound designer and did a little bit of music on the side. And and some friends, you know, and, and when you're working as sound designer, somebody sometimes you need a little bit of bit music. And uh, then I was there and could say like, yeah, I hear some music, and that kind of started yeah developing and then yeah and then we, we did the uh, uh, i was going to do my, my examination movie at the danish film school and and i had gotten like this uh, composer that was very uh, you know uh, lovely but um, it it kind of lacked any kind of you know use or uh, originality in a strange way you know so I asked, um, you know, my one of my really close friends, you know, Yoon, uh, if he would uh, do the music, and uh, and uh, and then Yoon, uh, you know, listened to it and he laughed and he agreed and and then he started sending me tunes, uh, uh, you know, and parts of of, of the picture, and uh, and I could just feel that my work was became so much more me and so much more uh, correct and, and somehow. I felt that I, I felt understood, you know, like he, his music helped uh, to uh, watch my images as I think they should uh, be, be watched. And then, and, and those who love, and then when I did my first feature, which was like six months after this, this, this examination movie, um, I, I asked you if we, we could do a movie, the whole movie together. And that was our first kind of my first feature and your first composer yeah. job. No? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, kind of, I think your first real hit back in Sweden, which became like an international hit, and I believe it got remade here, was uh, Snabakash or uh, Easy Money. What was it like working on that series together? I mean, we did the first one together because Daniel only directed the first one, but I I continue to do the other two, so it's three of them. Uh, <clears throat> no, but of course that was so much fun because I think it. We both felt that this was kind of. No, but the script was so good, and the story was so good, and 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 it was uh, it was kind of made for us, uh, I think. What I felt when we did it, uh, and and uh, nobody, we kind of understood that we we did we were up to something good, I think, and 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 it was really fun on the process because I was also sound engineer on set doing that. Yeah, film. So I was, I was, I it was, was called the, the big tree. Yeah, because it was so 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 tall, you know. And like, yeah, it was big <clears throat> I'm pretty tall. I'm, I'm six foot seven. So, so, uh, but I was the boom operator and and uh, sound recorders. I did it with together with another colleague uh, for that one, and then I did the score, and that was actually the score that made me. I mean, the success of that movie and this made me understand that I could really start living on but being you also, a composer. But you also had like a very clear idea, I remember, in, in your kind of, in your development, because, um, you know, we've been doing music and, and your music was more kind of like, uh, it was very simple, you know, and then for the yeah. first time you said that you wanted to use an instrument. Yeah, and you wanted an acoustic to use, instrument. Yeah, yeah, acoustic exactly. instrument. yeah, acoustic instrument. And you wanted to use the, 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 the guitar, yeah. uh, amongst others, and, and the, you wanted to focus on that. And then I remember you having sessions you know with, yeah. with, with the guitar and how that developed into the whole idea of the picture yeah you know yeah. in many ways no yeah. yeah exactly and i remember i i saw like one piece that he has he had made when i was shooting and he just looked at it and i was like i need more shots of the uh, backs of uh, you know shoulders that are walking through areas because i could just see it with the music of how beautiful it, it would be so i started shooting differently because I, I, he uh, showed me the music halfway through shooting the movie. And Daniel, you make a pretty impressive transition to Hollywood uh, with Safe House, um, which Ramin scores that, but then you get Jan to come in for uh, Child 44. Uh, what was that transition like again for you to essentially go Hollywood uh, for both of you? I mean, uh, for me, when I went, it was more like, uh, you know, like a, a lucky mistake. You, you, you know, you know, when I got the safe house, I, I, I said, no, I, you know, I, I don't want to do it. And because I was into this idea that I would be this kind of solitary um, uh, director 
And then my best friend, the, you know, director told me like, don't do that. And, uh, and I was like, oh. then, and then the producer called me up again and said, says, and they said, uh, you know, um, why not, uh, you know, do the movie? And I said, well, you know, I mean, if Dance, somebody like Denzel Washington would do the movie, I, I would do the movie. And I said it almost like something that I thought that would never happen. And then um, Denzel saw Easy Money and he, lo he liked the movie. So, so he said he wanted to meet me in New York. And I thought, and I, then I just felt like I had to do the movie because I love Denzel Washington. So my career just almost happened by, 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 by an accident. Uh, so when I then got to do Child 44, you know, you know, I was so impressed by what Yoon had done and what, what Yoon had always done to, to my to my movie. So I just wanted to go, you know, work back with with him again, you know, because it's it's uh, I always felt that, that that collaboration gave me so much. Yeah, was it easy for you to essentially make that transition to uh, studio films? Me? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a, 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 a really a wake-up call coming to LA and scoring uh, Shal 44 uh, from doing Swedish films and like and, and and I haven't done that much, so it was a little bit of a shock when I did it, uh, a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I managed to pull through, but it was uh, I learned so much, and I think it was probably the best film school you could ever go to. Uh, uh, that process that we had during that and, 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 and being able also to, to work with so amazing talents on, on, on the movies that you get to do uh, when you work on studio films. I mean, the talent behind the camera is amazing. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, <clears throat> sorry, the, I mean, I, I absolutely love life. I, I think it's just a lot of fun. And, and there have been so many alien ripoffs that had come along. And this to me was by far the freshest. Mm -hmm. And the most effective, essentially, to kind of take that alien idea. I mean, Daniel, when you you know got the material on Jan, I mean, was it like in your mind, okay, you know, this is obviously there's an inspiration here, but how do we make this really different and stand out on its own? Well, I I, I just thought that that, that uh, you know what I liked liked about life compared to Alien that it had almost more of like a. A Twilight Zone ending, you know, uh, for me, you, you know, it, it, that it had that kind of like, then everything goes to shit in the end, you know, which I always felt like was very like uh, uh, fun and and interesting, and that kind of uh, you know for me brought uh, like a different sensibility throughout the, throughout the picture, you know. But I mean, our our, our inspirations were were also so clear, you know. We were like when we were going into it, we were saying like uh, Penderecki and. Yeah, and 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 was you know was a celebration to, to like all what, the love, all the love, love we have, have for, 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 for for those movies. Yeah, you know, for, you, you, for the you classic sci-fi yeah. movies. Because I mean, in we the, love sci-fi movies. Yeah, movie, yeah and, and we're kind of film nerds. So I mean, I think Daniel and me, we when we see a new movie. We usually call each other. We're the first yeah. persons to call each other and, and start talking, you know, yeah. and then saying. Like, and okay, I I've like a this. lot of movies. I mean, a lot of different movies, or you know, everything. I you know, I just yeah. like pictures, yeah. you know. And and to be able to do a movie like that, I mean, the studio that we shot in was the same studio that they made two thousand one and Alien, you know, yeah. at the Shepherd on Lot yeah. in in London. So, you know, you were like you were in this kind of air, and then then we just thought like let's have fun with it, you know, yeah. let's not be afraid, just let let's you know let's let's be entertained, you know, yeah. enjoy it, you know, and let our inspiration, you know. Yeah, what kind of score? Uh, I mean, for the score, I fe always felt that. I was doing something. What would I appreciate yeah. to see in a movie like this? And yeah. and and with all the influences of 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 the yeah. kind of movies that I see and so on, it's, it's really no. It, it's yeah. For me, that was a life changing product in so many ways. I think. Yeah, I, I thought the score and the film were really both tremendously impressive. So again, our viewers, please send in your questions about Morbius for Daniel and Jan, and. Um, We'll get started with a, a Joe Reich uh, question here. Um, what did you want the Morbius score to sound like, and where was the score recorded? <clears throat> I mean, we wanted to make uh, like a dark, synth-heavy, yeah, uh, horror kind of, uh, yeah, with a touch of superhero in it, kind of score. Uh, I think we really wanted. We, I mean, we. 
I think from the get go, we really talked about John Carpenter and those kind of influences and and and, uh, and so on. And and I think it, and also to find the blend with the orchestra to bring also have the orchestra as like a backbone to it also. Uh, and also because of the genre, you you know, we felt that we could go quite far into yeah. into what, 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 what you would kind of relate to as a, like a, you know a, a genre yeah. idea, you know. Yeah, and then also we wanted it like the pulse driven that it's a, a drive into it that we have like a lot of percussion that puts you know puts a drive into it and and a sense of urgency and and and. Uh, but it, and definitely under like underlining the horror aspect of the movie. Absolutely, movies. yeah, classic uh, horror movie. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, and what's interesting is that you know there's a there's a funny little throwaway thing, uh, you know, where he pretends to shrivel up in the daylight. But Morbius is not a supernatural vampire; he is a super science vampire. He, yeah. So how does that? How do you reflect that in your direction, and in the score? Well, uh, you know, um, the, the movie also have like um, those kind of like uh, sciencey kind of inspirations. You, you know, in the lab scenes, I think you can clearly see that there's an inspiration to Hunger, you know, uh, by Tony Scott, uh, you know, or rip off, you know, some kind of, you know, how I use, uh, you know, those kind of lenses and that kind of vibe and that kind of blue, you know. Area so 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 I, I think that, that that always always you know plays in no yeah and I think I mean with the score we had a lot of like synth arpeggios that was yeah. kind of like it's almost felt like the DNA things on the screen and that 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 illustrates the the that the he's trying to figure out something yeah you know, but it's all like, this little I don't know scientific science sounds yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because again, a lot of it sounds like sonar. There's, there's definitely yeah, yeah, like no, a sonar totally. quality yeah. to the so score. The, you're trying to, you know, you know, grasp something. Yeah, you know? and and it's also we 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 record re recorded like a, a pits of the string ensemble that we re recorded and and kind of synthesized, but we processed it pretty hard afterwards, and it became this sonar sound that we then resampled so we can play it. Uh, and and it, you can hear it doing these kind of uh, uh, yeah arpeggios a la John Carpenter in the background, and it really gives this kind of sonar feel to it. And that was great fun, you know, experimenting and finding those kind of sounds, uh, you know, trying to orchestra to sound like a little bit more like bats and so on, and, and wing flaps, and you know, the squeaks of thousand bats flying and so on. So here's a question from uh, Louis Versinelli for Daniel. Um, my question is, when looking at the trailers, it's clear there are several Spider-Man teases and mo uh, more moments that were cut from the actual Morbius film seen in the theater. Several moments from the trailers have been cut, including some of the biggest Spider-Man Easter eggs in the teaser. However, are almost all these connections were cut. Uh, so basically, I guess this comes down to, are we going to see all of this cool stuff on the Easter egg reel or the deleted scene reel? What, what can you tell us about what wasn't in Morbius uh, that we could maybe expect on the Blu-ray or 4K? Oh, I think that everything that the fans would want, they, they will have, you know, more, more or less. And, 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 the, and the, you know, I mean, you know, I do the movie, you know, together with other people that also are doing the movie, and the, and then you have the people that are does the trailer, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to find out. I guess I guess we're going to be kept. Uh, <laughs> Um, I mean, you know, what's I, I guess, Daniel, how did Morbius even come your way? Was it was it like essentially life that impressed the the people over at Marvel that you'd be the right director for this? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, like um, I think uh, you know, life was uh, well liked. That they felt it was uh, precise and well, and it was done also, you know, with. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I did it with Skydance, life really. But uh, uh, Sony um, um, got it on the swing, and uh, you know while we were shooting, so we did it also together with Sony. So I had worked for Sony before, and uh, and uh, so 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 when they asked me, you know, I thought that life was a great experience. So 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 I was very interested by that, and then 
you know, I like, I'm, I'm a big Marvel buff, you know, what can I say? You know, you know, I need a lot of Marvel and, um, and I thought it would be fun to do something that would, wasn't like a, you know, like a romantic comedy, you know, so, but there was more like, um, you know, a horror pick, you know, somehow. So, um, Ivan Sorkin would love to know, did any vamp for, for both you guys, uh, did any vampire movie or score inspire you while working on Morbius? I think a lot. I mean, I think all of them almost, you know, uh, I think it is, uh, yeah, you know, because I've seen all of them and, and I think it is just there in the background, always inspiring you if you're going to do something and it's, it's always there. And, and and I think especially I mean I I loved the Bram Stoker's Dracula score uh, by Wojciech Kilar even when I you know was a teenager and saw the movie in the cinemas I I I, I directly bought that score I, I wouldn't say that it you can hear it in the score but it's you know somewhere back there it's 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 existing in my head so so that's it is probably inspiring to it and, 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 and also not just vampire movies i would say like monster movies overall like old monster movies and kind of like uh, <clears throat> it's almost in some of the cues we i mean we, we really wanted the kind of uh, he's alive kind of feel and i think that it always uh, uh, leans back to those kind of old monster movie scores and so on but to do like a more than touch to it what about you, Daniel? Were there any kind of vampire movies in mind when you set out on this? Oh, I mean, uh, you know, Lost Boys, uh, you know, as I said before, Hunger by Tony Scott in 1980, you know, Thirst, uh, you know, the, the you know, a wonderful Korean picture, you know, so, so, so the, 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 there were many, you know, but it's also like a, you know, it was that combination of like, then uh, it, it's also like a Marvel superhero movie. You know, and that's also like, like how the score is, you know, is that you, you still have like those. And then it was the interpretation of what a Marvel superhero movie was, you know, because then superhero movies, everything from, you know, Batman, you know, to, you know, so, 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 so we had to kind of define that by, by ourselves, you know, how we would do that uh, combination. And that was also like the process of doing the movie, you know. Yeah, you know, in a way, it's almost essentially a Jekyll and Hyde movie as well, where, okay, how is Morbius going to be able to drink blood without having to start killing innocent people? Like, you know, let's only get the bad guy. So there's kind of the duality of, of like this nice guy trying to uh, restrain the monster uh, within them. H how did that play into your approach and the score as well? Oh. <laughs> I repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's it's the, 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 the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde part of it. Yeah, yeah well, totally. Because no, I no. mean, that also fit, fit into your, your, your fascination yeah. of, uh, you know, oh, no. Yeah, 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 no, no, but exactly. No, no. So, so I think it's it really, we try to, you know, when he turns it, we, we really try to make it dark and, 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 and uh, gothic. Good, again, gothic and, and, and come from something more lighter and, and kind of pulsing and sciencey and then we kind of go into to more like uh, classic horror kind of thing uh, i think we went really much between those things now uh daniel i, I really just love uh jared leto's work he's just insane in house of gucci I, I love him with the israeli accent and we crashed great show and he's just he's really good in morbius you know he, he plays a pretty straight and narrow i mean what was your approach just you know working with jared as an actor because again he's an you know we kind of expect like this kind of nick cageism from him like how crazy can jared go what was it just like approaching the character with him as, as to how far he would go with it or how much he would underplay it no but it was interesting we were talking about many things you know beforehand you know for example the character that he plays is a, a person that has uh, had the you know, uh, a disease his whole life and, you know, how much of that uh, pain, if you've lived a whole life with a certain amount of pain in a certain kind of way that made you, that you can hardly walk by only by sheer will, you know, um, uh, how does that change your personality? And, and if, you, if you lose that pain, there has to be like the, the, that kind of phantom pain that, that, that still exists there. And how does that kind of person deal with becoming not only, you know, well, but, uh, you know, heroic well but when he changes to fully grasp how much he can do he turns into this uh, you know 
uh, this um, this other character of him, of him that is hungry and is bitter and angry and all those feelings that we all have that he has to kind of learn to accept within him. So, so we spoke about all those things beforehand. And then um, when we started shooting, he was, you know, that person. So, uh, so it was, it was a, also a joy to work with him because he was that person. So sometimes he could just, you know, move around, you know, like a Cary Grant, you know, so, so, so it was lovely. So I've got a question from um, Jose Cantonis. Uh, is there going to be a soundtrack release? Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm waiting to get the masters back. So, so uh, I think we uh, they were out on like streaming platforms end of this week, early next week, uh, hopefully. So, Daniel, I'd love to go back to, to the casting. H how did you decide upon Matt uh, to play the villain? Oh, I, I, I you know, um, I am a great admirer of, of, of his work. So, so, so the decision was, uh, you know, I think an inspired one. But what really made me happy was that the first time that I got to meet him, uh, you know, uh, when he came into the room, it was like seeing like Sid Vicious, you know, uh, meeting, uh, you know, you know, a character from Brideshead uh, Revisited, you know, he just had so much enigmatic uh, power, you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, it was really like a joy to just let him let loose on, on the part and, and be free, you know, and uh, and I think that you really can see like a certain kind of enjoyment of performance by, by, by Matt that, that I uh, truly salute. He, he's a great friend. How, how, tell me about Daniel. I mean, you know, I think the thing, you know, when you do a movie like this, is how much of a co how comic booky do you want to make the character just in in the inception? I mean, you know, again, when I was a kid, I loved, I especially loved Morbius going to the Savage Land with Kazar and Spider Man yeah, and all yeah. those great issues. You know, and he had this really kind of cool costume, and he kind of, in a way, very subtly does with the use of effects. But yeah. how, I guess, Daniel uh, and also Jan, how comic book ish did you want to go? with your visual approach and with the score. No, but I think with the score, we, I mean, I think we do it like you mean it. I think it is, you know, if we wanted to show that here Michael Morbius wakes up, we make it kind of like unison uh, kind of lead line that it's like, okay, here he's waking mm. up the day after of, 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 on, uh, on the ship and he's transformed and everything. Uh, I think it's, 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 it's I think it, we didn't really hold back on that. I think it is the the, the part of the fun also mm. bringing that up and and, and and you know enhance and and, and and push those kind of things forward. I think that's the the, the fun, a really fun thing that you can do with this. And that's mm. what we said earlier that you you can do so much mm. in in the, the in the in the the frames of a superhero movie. So so uh, whatever you want to do, you can kind of push yeah. it really hard so so that was fun yeah completely i mean it, again daniel did you want like the costume like you know or like super white makeup or how, how did you conceive visually the, the character and what you would do oh yeah uh, you know i you know it was i mean it was literally like a huge uh, you know thing of trying to find like which morbius are we going to do and how is it going to look like you know because i mean you really have a lot to, to choose from and you know you also have like the kind of nine inch nails kind of boy variant you know in, in in the mid 90s so so uh you know i just thought that uh, i thought lost boys w w was was a nice idea you know and uh, and uh, so 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 i thought that uh, uh, to have him in that kind of world who would he then become and let that lead me to the decision of how uh, you know morbus would be i always had like the, the, this is cover you know from uh, i think it's the late 70s you know where you have a cinema, you know, and, uh, you know, it looks like a shot from Taxi Driver, you know, and some, you know, people that are of, you know, you know, bad people character, you know, in, in the city in New York. And up, upon that cinema is a leaning kind of Morbius. And I always liked that, 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 that image, you know, uh, and so, so I thought, okay, let's do that, you know, and, and I was trying to find it. And then I thought that to use the lights was the way to kind of fill the, and the costume always had that purple inside, so that could fill the frame, so it would resemble the the costume that we all know and love, you know. Um, 
I'd love to talk about the uh, you know pa- you know pandemic and how it affected the, the the shoot. I mean, was it the movie completely done before the pandemic hit? No, 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 no. We were. I mean, you were like half a year. No, no. We, we were like in the middle of editing. Yeah, of editing. You know, like I was about yeah. to start up. I was yeah, about exactly. to start up, and then it and then it hit. And yeah, uh, yeah. and that was. That, <laughs> no, but I think that was. I I would say that was one of the hardest things with with uh, at least for from for, for my sake. Uh, it, 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 it was one of the hardest things with this project, I think, because it, it's so you couldn't really go for spotting meetings. We couldn't no. really go for. Uh, 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 so I was here in the Stockholm. interaction was really hard. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and and uh, no, and I think it's it's. Uh, the problem was also, you know, the, all the logistics of getting stuff done, or me going to the states and, and even going for recordings uh, was extremely hard because uh, the, the, uh, getting the work visa wasn't really possible because the, the, the American embassy was shut down here in Stockholm. I had to go to uh, London, but I couldn't go to London because we weren't allowed in. Uh, because of the COVID and Sweden and the way how we dealt with the COVID. Uh, so, but then I got a, you know, appointment at the Swedish uh, American embassy. Uh, and that was, uh, no, but it just took so much time. And also recordings were, you know, we were the first one to record on, on the Sony stage since the lockdown and and nobody i mean it went everything went super well and, and we have a big orchestra and and and, and uh, <clears throat> but nobody really knew how to do the spacing and so on you know we were the first one to do it really in 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 on that stage so so we kind of you know <laughs> had to so we recorded definitely everything separate you know so we had the strings and, and, and the brass separate and so on. so it was yeah Daniel well, went to the restroom. Okay, good. See, he's not transforming right now. No, no, no. He, he no, doesn't no. have to drink blood. No, he's coming out with his Dracula fact. Okay, good. Or like a blood bag. So yeah, I got to I got hungry. Um, <laughs> oh, well, good before he comes back, we got a question from Dale for you. Um, how has your background as a sound designer helped you carve a niche in the film scoring world? I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, if I carved a niche, I don't know. But I, I think I, from sound design, but I think from film school and really being a film nerd and, and studying film and, and really be into like the, also the drama into films, I think my strong point is finding like the right tone for 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 the scene and for the film. Uh, I think that is probably... Uh, the one thing that helped me a lot, but but of course the sound design also because you learn so much about uh, you learn so much about um, how it works, like with dynamics in movies and so on, and 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 and, and, and uh, yeah, and also you know the sound design of finding cool stuff to put in and, and use as instruments and how to record them and so on. It's really helpful, I think. So, so Daniel, going back to, to the pandemic question, I mean, I imagine, did you go back for reshoots? Because, you know, you read a lot of stories about the pandemic films that are finally coming out, and all this time gave them gives a lot of directors and composers the chance to tinker, to keep finessing and finessing uh, the film. Did you find that to be the case with Morbius? Of course, no. I mean, the 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 process then just uh, continued for for like two years, of like uh, editorial and contemplations, blah blah. And you, you know, I mean, the, you know that that's what happens because also, I mean, you want it, you know, like that's uh, you know, as any kind of a creative person, if you somebody you know pushes your deadline, you you you're, you're also like uh, you know fine with it. But it was really like it went really for a long time. No, Johnny. I mean, I mean, at some point. You know, uh, we had to kind of come to a place where we had to mix and, you know, so, 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 so we did that and then we opened it up a couple of times again, and, you know, so, so it was, um, it was really uh, strange, you know, because you know, life took like, what did life take? Like one year or less, 11 months, 
what of of life to do the whole movie. Yeah, no, it was yeah. like a year or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, like the post production was everything. Like, no, no, the post production was much nothing. Minuscule. It was yeah. just you know. Yeah. So. Um, so again, listeners, viewers, uh, sending your Morbius questions to the director Daniel Espinosa and composer Jan Ekstrin. So, so Daniel, um, could tell me what did you change about Morbius? Like, what what were some of the things that you added, or like maybe scenes that would have gone out the in a certain way if the pandemic never happened? Uh, what were some of the, the major changes that you made in the downtime that you had, like specifically? I mean, it's such a maelstrom, the, you, you know, the the, the 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 whole experience. So, so, so I can't really like pinpoint, you know, you know, all, all things that, that you know that are, that are in it. But I mean, if if you're contemplating, for example, if which is a popular question that you might be alluding to, uh, you know, if um, Michael Keaton was part of the first idea prior to Spider-Man, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, that, that kind of MCU. Versus, you know, Sonyverse or Venomverse, as, as some people call it. Those ideas of uh, they were there, you know, on, on shooting, you know, while we were shooting. So, so, and I think that idea of the idea, the concept of the different realities, comes more from a kind of Spider Verse that you have an existing, you know, a, you know, different uh, realities, and then on the Spider Man uh, that just uh, came out. Uh, they gave a suggestion of how that works and at this you know in that movie it works once because dr strange does a magical things thing but you know it, there's also like the, the conceptual idea you know that if you ever read fantastic four that there are just different dimensions you know and different things are happening happening in them so so and that concept was already there prior to spider-man and then yeah so, 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 but there were some reshoots because of Spider Man, too. Because, for example, Spider Man shows a certain way that you know an eruption should look like, so then you have to you have to do that the same way, you know. How, Daniel, how did you choose the vulture? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, that's a very like uh, you know, it's such a secret question. So well, he's in the like, trailer. Yeah. <laughs> so no, you, you no, 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 no. But it's more why and how you, you, you know on uh, how that happens. So, 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 so. Okay, so we were we're sworn to. I mean, you know, you, you, <laughs> you, you know, I can tell you as a fan what, what, why I love uh, the vulture, why I love that the, the, the vulture is with me. You know, as a fan, when I started, you know, really getting into, uh, you know, comics is like nineteen. You know, eighty-six to you know, nineteen ninety, and their vulture is quite a big deal. You know, in the kind of Spider-Man universe in Sweden, which was uh, two years behind the, the American di distribution, and uh, you know, and uh, and I always felt that uh, you know, vulture was so like original and interesting because I never understood why that old guy was so dangerous for Spider-Man because he was supposed to be like a normal guy. You know, and uh, he looked pretty sick. So, 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 uh, I welcomed that uh, idea. It was more that the case than, than, than a choice, you know. So, here's a, another question from uh, Louis Versinelli. Um, this is for Jan and for Daniel. Uh, what were your favorite tracks that you worked on for the score, and which ones were the most challenging, and how much music in total was composed for the complete score? Oh, my favorite song. How much? Uh, How much music? Was I it? think it's like ninety-two minutes total, or something like that. It's it's ridiculous amounts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, normal Swedish film, thirty-five minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, favorite tracks? I think when the detectives are going and breaking into. For me, it's that one because it becomes this kind of hands in the air uh, electronic community. It's like a siren sound that when we cut out to New York, I, I, I really like that part. Uh, and I think uh, the hardest part, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the hardest part was. I think it's just the sheer mass of 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 doing a score like this, like the all getting it 
all together. I think, and also was... like uh, I mean, I think that they, they kind of there was a certain insecurity that was that you know the, to have like some you know to have what we would call uh, you know like uh, the bliss, yeah. you know, the or the the joy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's always like the, the issues with, between us is that you know the joyful moments, the, the yeah. kind of the the the, the heroic yeah. uh, you know uh, music. Yeah. It's the one that uh, you know Jun always likes to do last. Yeah, you know everything like, that is a major uh, case. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll deal with that later. Yeah, I want the yeah. darkness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's so much uh, easier uh, to do. So yeah, I think for me, my my two favorite uh, cues in the score is the romantic cue uh, yeah. where he kisses. I don't know if they make a vampire baby off screen. Uh, but, uh, that the whole, uh, smooching scene. And I really dug the music when he six, the vampire bats on Matt Smith with the hero. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. tell me about scoring that. No, but I think, uh, the love scene, which was also the orchestra, the most favorite, uh, uh, cue also is, is, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer in the in on the soundtrack than it is on the movie. Uh, no, it's a. I think it is a beautiful cue, and it's it's basically. Uh, I just did. I have a a really nice felt piano in the in the other room that is is really squeaky, and and uh, so I did this arpeggio that it started with, and then I have a Rhodes. Uh, here that it's also really crappy and and it gives this so I double the piano the, the lead of, of the piano on the melody I doubled up with the, the roads and put it into some the delays and stuff and and it worked so well and then we have a nice lush orchestra in the background it's very subtle uh, but it was um, no I'm really really happy I think that is also one of my absolute favorite cues uh, I mean, when we did it, we thought a little bit of the, you know, of the feeling of the, the you know, the, the scene in heat. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, when when they're like uh, when they're standing, understanding on 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 like on, on like a balcony. Okay. Oh, yeah, and it's just no. this open thin thing. And, the, yeah. and and like uh, you know, the lights are like uh, you know, small stars. Yeah. You know, behind them. Yeah. And tell me about the big uh, climax. Uh, you know when we no, really but get the, the, on yeah, the we... big the big climax is really like when he shoots the bat or when he's. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, when he rises off the bats and we come in, it's this big uh, kind of definitely the he's alive kind of uh, melody kind of phrase motif uh, that uh, is happening and and and. Uh, which I think is really funny. Uh, it's or, old school. Yeah, and it's old school. And it's pretty cool. I, I think it's just, you know, once again, do it like you mean it. And and then uh, I think it is, uh, well, after that, when he shoots the bat at, at Matt Smith, it's really back to the roots of, 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 uh, of my, you know, old school idols when I got into electronic music in, in the 90s, you know, the Prodigy and, and the Chemical Brothers and, and, and Underworld, and you really, really those kind of sounds and screeching kind of synth, uh, pitch bended synths, uh, very distorted and, and a really like industrial drive to it. And, and yeah, which is great fun, which I just love to do. <laughs> I could store, stand and distort synths all day if I, yeah. So, so Daniel, I mean, we can have spoilers. A couple of million people have seen the the, the movie. I find it a little interesting that Mass Smith's death sequence was kind of nice. Uh, w w was it ever supposed to be something great? Because usually, when vampires get killed, it's disintegration, decaying. I mean, he just kind of dies. Was there ever anything nastier there, or was that always the intent to give him a nicer death scene? No, but I mean, no, I mean, you know, it's it's PG thirteen, you know, so so. <laughs> you, know, you can only do so much <laughs> but you know if you, you you can imagine it's he gets attacked by you know a million bats Sorry. if they start eating on you you know but it's, it's the it's it's the serum that kills him really it's it's no the, exactly uh, but, yeah. but, but, but i just mean that if you would add that that they have like gotten him and then you know like piranhas eating at him and then he gets the serum, and then he, from that he comes back. And then the idea is that you then you would almost see that that first person that you met that was a sick person that was a nice person, and then he dies. 
Yeah, well, I don't know. So, something tells me he might come back somehow because he didn't just, he didn't <laughs> just <laughs> I, like, I like that guy. Uh -huh. I really like that guy. So here's a question from um, Esteban Cortez uh, for you, Jan. What synths do you use in the score? Um, the synths you see here. <laughs> so uh, uh, and there was a lot of like the alarm sounds that is coming back and you hear it, Wee! those kind of techno hoovers. I did with the EMS Synthi, which is like a suitcase synth. It's up here, I can a little bit stuck in it, but yeah, it's 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 a really fantastic uh, space fart machine that mainly does space farts, but it's it's really great space farts. Uh, I use that one a lot. I use the Moog one uh, a lot. Uh, I love the Prophet Six and especially distortion on it. Uh, I use that a lot too, uh, and also double distorted with. Uh, the culture vulture um uh, that i have under here uh, and then i mean yeah i have a pretty big modeler back there and 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 uh, the roland system 100 i use that a lot too uh it's great for for uh and also the of course the ob8 was used a lot and some actually i got that very late in the process but the waldorf quantum which i really like the sampling features in and you can do like really like bad lo-fi sampling in with it uh, which i really appreciate so daniel i'll, I'll ask you this scoop and there you go <laughs> so daniel it always interests me you know you know when the director gets you know what they know is going to be a pg-13 you know horror superhero film and essentially you have a character who slashes throats cuts people up drinks a lot of blood some you know kills five cops in one shot as a director how do you stage this to get across the the idea of this severe violence being done but not really showing it how what, what's the trick? Oh, I mean, it's 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 really difficult. I don't know the trick, you know, because 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 I you know uh, I direct a movie, and in the movie you have to do certain things, and you know I just think that it's in, in intention is much more kind of brutal. I mean, in real life, to be serious, there's not much blood, you know. Almost if people get shot, it's just movements, you know. So. So it's more kind of the, the, the intentions and the intensity. I think that that's, you know, one thing that I'm, you know, I'm really impressed that the movie got the, got the PG-13, you know, you know, because I think that the, there's still some kind of intensity over uh, certain parts, but the, um, all of the things I've done in America has, have been R-rated, so, 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 I don't know when. You know, I like to just do a movie, you know, and not uh, mind the, the, mind the, 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 um, the rating, but uh, but uh, yeah. it's it, it, it's one of those movies where, where it's kind of in when you make a Marvel movie, that's that's what's happened. Then you do a PG 13 if you're not Ryan, you know, and uh, he deserves it. So, I think one scene I particularly liked uh was the whole subway fight. Um, and I think that was shot like in I, I think that was shot in London, essentially Dublin yeah. for 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 New York. Um, but tell me about shooting about shooting that and, and scoring that scene. You know, I just love the whole kinetic energy, you know, him wiping out all the cops just like that, you know, and just I mean, kind it, of levels it, that it goes. Was, through. It was like the first idea that, that that I had of the movie, and I think like one of the ideas that I really got to do, like. Uh, you know, uh, just how I wanted it, and 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 you know, so 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 I told you that that was like the one of the first thing I, I told you when I gave the script. I said like, oh yeah, but this subway scene where it just says that they run down, uh, you know, um, uh, the subway, he hits him, and then they you know talk talk, and then he you know flies away. So 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 uh, I told him of, of the whole idea that it would be like this rotating thing, yeah. and we were. I mean, the whole movie is very like, you yeah. know, like it has that kind of. Yeah, and it's also almost like the synth leaders following him around when they're running up the walls. So like, then it's all, yeah, we try to replicate that a little bit with the synth to like really push them on and, and, and this distorted kind of the high bass uh, synth sound. It was a nice scene because when we have like that slow motion thing, you know, we can do, 
you know, they, they just, I, I'm allowed to kind of play around with colors and, and Yoon can just, uh, you know, uh, do, you know, it, it's very free, you know, in many ways, what kind of music that you are going to compose in that uh, moment. Yeah. And, and I think it's also funny when they land because then it's like, okay, we completely changed from, from the atmosphere that we leave them on up on the streets when they're actually mm. talking, you have kind of, you know, uh, kind of bonding a little bit and understanding each other for a while and then start beating up each other and, mm. and then fly down. But we kind of, when they land there again, we're in a completely different kind of darkness that we weren't on the street. Uh, and I think it's, yeah. Well, what's, really what's it like being part of just this this giant Marvel tapestry, just in terms of, you know, I guess the oversight that you have? Because obviously it's like the first franchise, you know, movie outside of Snap and Catch that both of you guys have done, but at this at this level. No, but I, I mean I'm I mean I'm super grateful and super. I mean it's it's if you had have gone back in time and asked me or told me 15 years ago uh, that I would do a Marvel movie and I would never have believed you, you know. So I'm just super happy and grateful and, and thankful for for that Daniel gets to do these kind of movies and he brings me on. So so I mean I'm I'm I, I'm loving it and and and, and, and uh, it's definitely not something I take for granted and, and, and uh, no, and, and of, of course it's a huge responsibility, and, and sometimes it's really, in a way, you think about it, uh, uh, how big it is, and then, and then you get kind of scared, and it's kind of, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a special thing, I think. What was it like for you, Daniel? I mean, you know, do like oh, I mean, essentially... I mean, I mean uh, you, you know, I think that, I mean, for, first of all, you, you know, I, I think that the Jung's uh, uh, work is um, absolutely gold. You, you know, I mean, to, to, so, so, so he says, you know, that I bring him, bring him on, it's bullshit. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to work with Jan as long as he will have me. At some point, he will just kick me out and says, like, I have better directors. I'm not going to work with Mr. Spinoza anymore. But, uh, no, but I mean, you know, for me, it, it's much more like, a, you know, it's such a kind of big uh, enterprise for, you know, a lot of people involved. And, you know, so, so, so it's both um, the joy as, as a, you know, to see one's, uh, you know, as a 12 year old, see oneself. And, uh, and, uh, and then it's a, a very complex system of how things are done. What do you think makes for a lasting director composer collaboration? I think that the, I mean it's like any relationship, you, you know, like uh, it boasts about the, like uh, uh, trust, love, and the curiosity. Yeah. No, like, like, and also in a in a challenging kind of way, also yeah. right? that you challenge each other and, yeah. in a way, and 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 I, at least from my, I really like that Daniel always just kind of challenged me. I mean, I've never done a superhero movie before. When I told, when he told me, uh, it's like, oh, I'm probably going to do Morbius. I was scared shitless there for a while because it's like, my God, how am I going to do a superhero movie? I don't know. I've never done that, and 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 I think that is 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 a really. From my part, is is really how we, you know, also grow and evolve together. is 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 amazing. Uh, I wouldn't want to change it for the world. You know, it's it's. I think it is. A, it's a really cool thing, and it's it's it's. I think as a composer, we're working with other directors also. When they, when you don't know each other that well as we do, it you can feel a little bit more lonely. It's not that I'm. I'm needy or something like that, but it 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 is a kind of lone job. But it it's I know with Daniel, it's it's always I we have such a good dialogue, and you can always uh, feel that it's 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 totally yeah, transparent communication, uh, which is fantastic. And I think he, he he's he's the best uh, composer. <laughs> you know, you know, always when I do something, he puts his music on ah. it, and I, and I'm amazed about, about what it is, and you know. I feel like a better human being, you know. But that's because he makes me feel. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, this pretty much ends with the vulture saying, uh, "Let's do some good." I think that's what he says. So it's it's not. It's going to maybe. I don't know if there's a not so sinister six uh, movie ahead uh, for you both, but uh, you know, with the movie doing pretty well, has yeah. has is there going to be more musical adventures of Morbius? 
or more cinematic. Yeah. Oh, I I think that the, you know anything that the fans wants, they will have. You know, and and the, and the, and I think that the, that the, the the whole thing with Marvel is that uh, things exist. You know, with each other. That that's what I liked about Marvel when I was a kid. That, that it's it's like a high school yard. You know, and and then you find out the one that you like, and then you hang out with, with them, and the ones that you like a lot, you're gonna see more of them. You know, and uh, and uh, and uh, so so yeah, I think it's 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 always an interesting future. And I guess uh, last question for both of you: if if you had your pick, AV, of a deep deep dive Marvel character to make a movie about to score, who would it be? I don't know. <laughs> no, but I, I I used to when I was a kid. I liked this, but they, they made a TV series of that that I never saw because I kind of understood that that wasn't that dark. But I always saw Cloak and Dagger was a kind of cool uh, series, and I think you could make it so dark, you know, that it, it could be this uh, terrible, not for kids, you know. And then it's like PG eighteen. Uh, that would be great. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, no, but I think that would Disco. be fun. Yeah, and Disco, know, yeah, yeah, I know. And also, the total fucking darkness. Yeah. Just, uh, eating people's yeah. soul. Well, yeah. Well, Cloak and Dagger meets Morbius. I am there. Uh, John yeah. <laughs> and Daniel, thank you so much for joining us at Film Music Live. I want you all to watch Morbius. It's now theaters with the encore on Madison Gate Records this Friday the 8th, I think. Um, thanks to Mark Northam, our producer, Dale Turner, Andrew Kropp, and Kyrie Hood at White Bear PR. And I will see you on the next Film Music Live. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.